Hey everybody, it's your favorite teacher, Ms. Klein here. Uh, today we have a substitute, so I thought I would teach a lesson to you on your iPad. So you do need your math notebook and you need your SAB. And if you could go ahead and write the lesson title down in your math notebook, it's 3-3, three, three, discuss two-digit and four-digit quotients. So the short way you could write that is two-digit and four-digit quotients. Remember, quotients are answers to division problems. And anytime I start to go too fast for you, the nice thing about video is you can pause. So make sure that you pause and you can always rewind if you miss something as well. But I want to see really good notes and when we get to the SAB, I want to see that you're following along and you are solving the problems with me, not just watching me do it. Okay, let's get started. And we're going to do one word problem in our math notebooks together. So if you want to uh, write with me here. Uh, don't write down the problem, just write down the work. Here's what it says. A grocer has 130 cans to put on five shelves. How many cans will fit on each shelf? So before we solve that, uh, we're going to do some vocabulary review. What is the divisor, dividend, and quotient in this question? So if you remember, the divisor would be how many groups we're splitting into. The dividend would be the number that we're splitting up. And the quotient would be the solution to our division equation. So the first question that I ask myself is, what is the dividend? In other words, what number are we splitting up? And if you see we have 130 cans that we are splitting into five shells, that means that our dividend is 130. We are splitting those cans uh, between five shelves, so that means that we are splitting them into five groups, which means that five is our divisor. And to find the quotient, we're going to have to divide. So it'll look like this. We have our dividend divided by the divisor. Now we're going to draw a picture. So to draw our picture, we draw two rectangles next to each other like this, and we are going to make the height as 5, and we are splitting up 130, so I'll put 130 in the box, and then I'm saying, how many 5's are there in 130? Well, I'm going to start with how many 5's do I think there are in 100, and I know that 5 times 2 is 10, so 5 times 20 is 100. Okay, so what I'm saying is that I think there are 20 fives in 130 at least. So if I subtract now, I will see that I have 30 left to split up. So in other words, we have already put 100 cans onto the shelves, into 20 shelves, and now we still have 30 to uh, split into groups of five. So remember from yesterday, we are going to put our 30 into the second box because that's showing we're still trying to split 30 into groups of 5. So the question is how many 5's are in 30? And that is 6 since 6 times 5 is 30. So we can subtract those 30 cans. It's like we just put them on the shelves and we have 0 left over. So our last step is to add up our partial quotients 20 and 6. We can put those here. 20 and 6, and if you put them together, you get 26. So our quotient is 26. Okay, so I want to show you what that would look like if we actually were looking at the cans. Here's a more detailed picture, and you can see that we started with 130, and we split these 130 cans, there are 130 total cans here, into 26 cans on each shelf. So there's five, uh, five shelves and we have 26 cans in each of those five shelves. That's it for our math notebook. We can go on to our SAB. Did you show your work in your math notebook? Go ahead and get to page 107 in your SAB. You can see the directions say solve. 
We're going to use the place value sections and expanded notation methods for division. Expanded notations method is also called partial quotients. So here you can see uh, an example they've already done the place value sections for us. They had 252 divided by 9. So what they did is they made a rectangle model and you can see that 9 is the height which means that it's the divisor and the dividend, the number we're splitting up, is 252. So we put that in the first box. We say how many 9's can go into 252. So if you think of your 9's, uh, 9 times 10 is 90. 9 times 20 is 180. So we do 252 minus 180 is 72. Now what we need to do here is to put the expanded notation method. So where our quotient goes, we're going to put in that I'm going to put in that 20, and that shows that we were able to fit 20 nines into 252. Underneath 252, we're going to do the same subtraction that would have been in the place value box. So it's 180. We subtract 180, and we had 72. They've already done the subtraction for us here. Um, and then we brought 72 into a new box, and that's because... Uh, we still have 72 left to split up. We've already split 180 into 20 groups of, of 9. And now we say, how many 9s are there in 72? How many 9s are in 72? It's exactly 8. So we should put an 8 up here in our quotient spot. And then we say 8 times 9 is 72. And subtract, and we have a remainder of 0. Our last step in expanded notation method or partial quotients is to add our partial quotients. So we had 20 nines plus 8 nines makes 28 nines. So 252 divided by 9 is 28. Let's try another one. We'll do number 2. So on this one we have 162 divided by 6. Uh, if we set up our place value sections, we will put 162 into the first box and we're asking how many sixes are there in 162. So if you think about uh, your sixes, we have 6, 12, 18. So we cannot fit 3. 3 times 6 is 18, so we're going to use 2. So 20 sixes in 162. So put your 20 up here in your quotient spot. And then we say 6 times 20 is 120. And we're going to subtract that from 162. That's showing that we've already made 20 groups and split up 120 of that 162. So over here we're also going to subtract 120. It's just two different ways to show the same thing. And you can go ahead and do 162 minus 120. That's 42 put 42 in both spots. And so now you draw the arrow and you put 42 up here. And if you're looking at the uh, expanded, you're going to say how many sixes are there in 42? 6 times 7 is 42. So put your 7 on your place value sections and put your 7 up top on your expanded notation. And then we have 6 times 7 is 42. We subtract, and there's nothing left. 42 minus 42 is 0, so there's no remainder. We add together our partial quotients. 20 plus 7 is 27. So 162 divided by 6 is 27. Going on to number 3, we have a longer one. This one is 8,984 divided by 8. So our first step is going to be to ask how many 8s are there in 8,984. And we should start with something simple like 1,000, because 8 times 1,000 is 8,000. So put your 8,000 there. We're going to put 1,000 in our partial quotient spot up top, and then we're going to subtract. We're going to subtract on both sides. You're showing the same division two different ways. So in our place value sections, I'll subtract. I get 984. I draw an arrow and put the 984 there. And over here, same thing, we get 984. Okay, so now we're saying how many 8s are there in 984? 
that I would say would definitely be 100. There are more than 100, but we're going to go with 100 because 8 times 100 is 800. Put the same thing over here and subtract in both places. So you get 184. Okay, draw an arrow. Put your 184 in the next box. So that what that's showing is we've split up everything except for 184. So we're asking how many eights are there in 184. And I would say there's definitely 10. 20 eights is 160. 30 eights is 240. That's too much. So let's go with 20. And 8 times 20 is 160. Okay, now I made a little mistake here. I forgot to put the quotients up top in our uh, expanded notation. So I need to remember that I had that 100 and we just had 20 just now. Okay, so we're going to subtract 24. So now we just have 24 left to split up. So we're saying how many groups of 8 are there in 24? How many 8s? There are exactly 3 8s in 24 if you know your multiplication. So put a 3 there and this time I won't forget. I'm going to put the 3 in my partial quotients. 3 times 8 is 24. 24 minus 24 is 0. Add them all up and you get your partial quotient, that is. Add up your partial quotient, you get 1,123. Hooray! Did you show your work like I did? If not, rewind and try again. Alright people, let's do another one. This is number four. So we have 7,722 divided by 3. Our first question we're going to ask is how many 3's are there in 7,000? Now I'm going to go with 2,000 because I know that 3 times 2 is 6, so 3 times 2,000 is 6,000. Okay, I can't use 3,000 because that would be 9,000. We don't have 9,000 to split up. So go ahead and subtract. You should get 1,722. Uh, you're going to write it in both places. Over here we're going to draw an arrow and show that we now have 1,722 left to split up. And our new question is, how many 3's are there in 1,700? 22. So I think there are definitely 100. That would be 300. Definitely 200. That would be 600. We need to get bigger than that. So if you just look at the 17, ask yourself how many 3's are there in 17. And you should get to 5, because 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 6 is 18, which is a little bit too big. So we're going to use 5, and this would be 500. We're also going to put 500 up here in our partial quotients. And our next step would be 3 times 500, which is 1,500 or 1,500. Put that in both spots and subtract to show that you've just made 500 groups and you're taking away 1,500. Okay, you get 222. Uh, over here we're going to draw an arrow and put our 222 into the next place value section and ask how many 3's are there in 222. I know that 3 times 7 is 21, so I'm going to use 70 3's, which is 210. Put 210 in both spots and subtract. And you should get 12. So we are now down to just 12. We're saying how many 3's are in 12? And that is exactly 4. So we're going to put 4 here and put 4 up in your partial quotients. And 3 times 4 is 12. So put 12 in both spots and subtract. There's nothing left over. So our last step is to add up our partial quotients. You can do that here sideways. 
or you can do that uh, vertically over here.